in a land protected and hidden from the universe, on a different plane of the world, hidden in plain sight, which still has been found, there's a dragonette, and her name is Waterwind. She was a young dragon with ocean blue scales. She reached for the stars. She was smart, kind, she was the role model for all the other dragonettes. Then, that all changed. The war came, and when it came, it destroyed her legacy, it destroyed her life. Her dreams flew away, the launching crew siege, the griffs, the um, society of hippogriffs, the griffins under King Feather Queen's rule, were taken hostages. Shortly after her coming of age, her parents went missing. Rumors were that King Featherkeen went into a frenzy. At the Council of Kings, they lashed out when the King of Dragons was talking and declared a war over theft of their sacred jewel. The only relative safe place was the Underdark, a complex cave network running through the whole Mithria. Over centuries, it had been crawling with monsters like orcs, giant bugs, and other oversized creepy crawlers that have two intentions, to kill and or to eat. Except for the crawling ca- crawler can sometimes, and the more civilized races. It was the only relative safe place for them, excluding the forces. Forests. Maybe not all the griffs left, but maybe they're still maybe not all the griffs left. Maybe they're still there. It's too risky. That's what they say. No risk can be taken, the council would say, too dangerous. But one day they were missing. None. Not a zero. Nothing. No nightmares. They just stopped. Just like that. Gone. Now that they were gone, the pictures flew out of her head. Her dreams were uncovered. She was finally awake again. She was remembering. She had hope again for winning this war. She was ready. Her bags were packed. Her stuff was hidden. The scouts brought good news. She was ready. The scouts reported finally, after nearly a year and a half, it was safe. They could make camps, nothing, but nothing permanent. And we had to say secret. And more good news, the dragons had an ally, but it was an un- unexpected one. It was the Crawler Clan. They were an odd one to be allies with, especially because their society consisted of, consisted of misfits, outcasts, creepy crawlers, monsters, and thieves. The government was a work of art. There was a representative for every species and or clan. The insects, dwarves, sentient plants, fungi people, thieves, the clan of outcasts, aberrations such as cloakers and beholders, trolls, orcs, cave giants, cults, galvanoids. Okay, you get the point. But they each had a representative too. It depends on if you're counting heads or bodies in some cases. She was ready to leave. She was ready for peace. For allies, she was ready to end the Great War. The first stop was in the Fey Forest. She had arrived. It was a long fight, ducking for cover, staying from the griffs and all that. But she was there. It looked like a hurricane village. There were big branches and tree tree bees everywhere. The northern woods were completely flooded, and the number of creatures living in the woods were half. The survivors had been helping clean up the place. She was soon informed that the griffs had ransacked the place, left, and then a big storm hit from the north coast. And worse, the water and weather, weather spirit sent it. If you didn't know, when the spirit sends storms and other disaster, it means something big is going on. The elders informed her that they were looking for something. They said it was jewelry that had the crystals of peace. They put up posters with pictures on it. They gave the, the fae a week to find them, and then, if they failed, they would take it by force. To her camp outside the village and packed and left, up and left for home. Next up, the ca- Council of Krakens. It was the dragon's worst enemy. Not the dominant, overgrown octopuses, the place. And there is an explanation. The water. So. Much. Water. But having a taste for water, due to the fact she was a late developer of her special breath, such as fire, gas, and spark, sonic, shock, lightning, boiling hot water, etc. She retreated. She had arrived in Aquatown. There were krakens everywhere. She passed a few street fights, and finally went to the council. Most of the council seemed to be collapsing, and the leader, Queen Councillor Arrowhead, said that they could not offer their services right now due to problems of their own. After receiving this negative answer, she rushed out of town, back to camp, to go home. She was going to end this thing, and she was going to at least know how to use a spear and put up a fight. She was going to need to pay a visit to the Gorgata family. After weeks of training, she went to the mercenaries' grill to find some warriors. She left with only half the gold she came with, not including the gold she spent. She thought she was ready, but only time would tell. She was ready. She had made some griffin friends at the outcast table in the Under Tavern, which is the main tavern in the Underdark. Kind of self-explanatory. But good news, they knew the palace and guards like the back of their claws. Bad news, they were some of the most wanted criminals, backstab- slash backstabbers to griff kind in the kingdom of Razorfeather. 
therefore would be arrested on site if they're caught, which meant A, they need cloaks of a silver tread fe feathers, aka visibility cloaks, and B, they couldn't take any gold she wanted to keep on her while they LII, locate, infiltrate, investigate the Razor Feather Palace. They were able to get through the back window of their kitchen. The only way that happened was Swiftfly's owl-like flying, Slybeak's deceptive way, and his inside man, who was actually a friend of death to him, and long story short, um, had no kingdom communication, so he didn't know that he was banished, and no one told him afterward. Later, they freed the dragon for his shackles so Water One could pretend to be a slave. She didn't like the itchiness of the skin or the fact that she was wearing the skin of her favorite bird, which is supposed to she was surprised the half bird beings were comfortable with them. Finally, the throne room. She took her cloak and shackles off, relieved of the fact the king wasn't there. She put the danger ahead signal on the don't do anything signal. She told the queen, I come in peace, and she ready to allow the best one of the guards to back off. The elegant queen replied, finally, something to end the king's madness. Did you bring the peace rules? Can you end it? Please, I'll do anything. She eyed the guards with a dismissive look. The guards, who were very ashamed, left with their spears in a slightly painful position, probably a griff to tradition. She noticed that the queen was a hippogriff, not a fabled royal griffin with a pair of golden lion paws. She also noted that the king was different from looking at his portrait. His front paws were those of a lion, not an eagle, and the back were vice versa. Do you have the jewels? The royal hippogriff went on. Yes, but I'll need something first, the dragon with a serious face that make you shudder said. Wait, what? Tell me. What is it? Quickly, before you know who comes, she said with a worried look on her face growing ever so slightly. I think I'll be fine, she said, with a cloak right behind her so no one could see her from behind. I actually need two things. First, I'll need the keys to the dungeon so I can free everybody you captured. And second, I need you to make a truce with all dragon kind. And I will receive my wishes, your majesty, Waterwing said, not in the mood for jokes. The feathery being replied, that's a lot to ask, but I can do some of it. Guards, get me the dungeon keys. And a guard hurriedly flew in and gave her the keys. The queen tossed the keys to, a dragon, to the dragon, and she tossed her jewelry to the queen. Without harming, buddy, harming anybody, she cloaked her entire body and flew out the window. Her feathered companions followed her. They flew back into the escape tunnels of the palace into the room. After what seemed like days, they found her parents. They were freed, given keys, and told them to free as many dragons as they could find. And that's exactly what they did. Except for the dragon that sold the jewels to her mother. At freeing some old acquaintances, her feather fr friends left. Two years later, the dragons had fought off their rebellion of street fighters and other no gooders. The dragons were expanding their home deeper into their dormant volcano home. The griffs were giving hip griffs more rights. The Underdark now has a functional government and is living up to its new name, the Glowing Caves. The forest is growing into the decaying lands. And all in all, Mithria is thriving. Things are better than they ever have been and probably ever will be.